creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're beginning a new series of shows and I hope you'll watch as often as possible. Today we're going to talk about why fish is so versatile and good for us. We'll learn to make some cute purses and demonstrate making treat pops. Fish is so versatile and according to my guest, Pat Baird, fish has nutritional benefits that other foods just don't seem to have. It's also easy to prepare and kid friendly. Pat's a registered dietitian and represents the National Fisheries Institute. She lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. Patty Dunn is a designer and seamstress and she's going to show some purse samples made from old jeans and other scraps. She'll demonstrate using the zipper in various ways. She's the owner of All Dunn Designs in Corpus Christi, Texas. And my first guest is Nancy Seiler and she represents Wilton Brands in Woodridge, Illinois. Nancy's going to demonstrate how to make treat pops, which are sweet individual servings of cake layered with icing or a favorite filling and topped with a festive accent suitable for any occasion. Nancy, it's always so much fun to have you come because you bring something new with you each time. At least it's new to me. I've not seen it. And, and I'm anxious to see how these treat pops will work because I think they would not only be good for kids' parties, my grandchildren, for instance, but for adults, too. They're so unique. Well, they are. They're colorful. They're fun. They're so easy to make. And uh, there's so many different varieties that you can use. You can use them for any season, occasion, just because and you can kind of personalize them and they have a top on them so you could give them as a gift if you wanted to or a party favor and you can arrange them so that they could actually be your centerpiece too so oh. not only is it dessert but it's also centerpiece uh -huh. and I like to layer them with obviously cake and icing but you can use different colors of sorbet or ice cream or you can mix and match uh -huh. um, you know with any other type of uh, dessert item fruit that you want to put in there. Yeah. Or fruit whatever. and whipped topping is also Ooh, good yeah. in there. We've done them with blueberries, raspberries, and you have to cut your strawberries if you use those, but really tasty. Uh -huh. Oh gosh. Well this is what it looks like when you buy the set of 12 mm -hmm. uh, treat pops. And they also come in a set of six and then there is a set of four in grocery stores too. So oh, if you want to just uh -huh. try them in a smaller amount, you can get a smaller uh, set of them if you want to. And you know if you really didn't want to buy the container, you could do a parfait, but I don't think it's quite the same. But I, no, just, I don't either. Just telling you. And when I was asking you how in the world you have a piece of cake that fits just the mm -hmm. right size, you have an answer to that as well. Well, we have a mini whoopie pie pan and one cake that will make 70 of these. Wow. And normally if you're doing whoopie pies, you'd use two, so you only get 35, well, mm -hmm. which is pretty good size pretty good. serving. Uh -huh. uh, but you can get uh, these and make them in chocolate or, you know, virtually any flavor you want. Mm -hmm. Red velvet, done them with red mm -hmm. velvet, you know, with the uh -huh. white icing in between. Um, you can also use a mini muffin pan to make that fits the uh, container. Oh. And then if you really didn't want to bake, you could use two vanilla wafers. Oh. Perfect. I like the cake. I think it's uh -huh. better and it holds up better with the icing or any kind of uh, coloring that you put in between there than the vanilla mm -hmm. wafers, but you could use vanilla you wafers could. too. Well, let's take a look at some of the ones that you've made because uh, you, you have all colors. You have different types of toppings. Uh, those are beautiful. I've got some with the strawberries, with the cut strawberries, so that mm -hmm. lends itself to a little bit more of an elegance or an adult dish or, I don't know, a way to get your kids to yeah. eat strawberries. Uh -huh. And then the other is cake and icing with some icing decorations, and there's lots of icing decorations out there. I just kind of, you know, picked flowers because uh -huh. those are always something that's, you know, really easy to um, uh, use. But, you know, you could actually put soccer balls on top there well, if you, you want to do it for the kids, you know, for, you know, like a treat. And they don't all have to match. That's what I was no. just thinking. I have pieces of from other parties and there'll be three flowers left or one soccer ball or something. Yeah. So this would be a great way to use those up. Well, it'd be good because you could make your whoopie pies, freeze them, and then when the kids come home, you could actually just, you know, say, oh, here's a What a great treat snack. Pop. Yeah. Bet, treat pop. So let me show you the basis okay. of it. This is what the container is. It's a three-piece container and it's got this um, section here and it mm -hmm. comes down and there's actually a square. So you line up the square and just pull that down. Now this here can either be the top. So if you want to have it on the go, uh -huh or it can be the stand, so whether oh, like you can display glass. them lined uh -huh. up on the table if you wanted to, or for actually building them. So I was just going to build one. I actually uh -huh. put a chocolate um, whoopee in there. And then I have, this is buttercream icing that's been mm. colored pink, and I have a tip 2A, which is actually in the treat pop decorating kit. Oh. But you could use any round tip 
uh, makes it just a lot easier. You could also uh -huh. use the one end, which is the large cupcake tip. And so, I was thinking if you had this as an activity, it, it's a twins Oh, that's parties. a great idea. You know, just have the bags filled and let the kids mm -hmm. decorate it as they want to. And you can see you just put another uh -huh. uh, whoopee in. And How you don't have to be really, clear. you know, good at this. You're just basically getting your icing in there. And then uh -huh. to top it off, uh, I would just do like a round and going well, around you do a that. cupcake. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. So let's do one. And then this one I didn't start off with, so I'm just going to drop it in, in the uh -huh. bottom. And this one will, will do something a little different. We'll do two different colors. So there's that. I think that'd be fun. Another one. And I see now what you mean about just let, if, if we put the cover on the top, mm -hmm. it would be a great favor for each of the kids to get to take home from the see, party. I don't have pink. Let me get the blue off this. What a conversation starter. You know, and for the uh, different holidays, you know, obviously you could figure out what holiday you might want to put on top. So this looks kind of tropical. I'm going to put these little hibiscus icing decorations mm. on top. I love Pretty. these. Reminds me of islands. I feel like I should have my flip-flops on. Uh -huh. And How you could put pretty. sugars and uh -huh. sprinkles. I forgot to put some sprinkles on that. But, you know, any kind of sprinkles or sugars, you could add to it if you wanted to. If you forgot, you could come back in and stick them on later. Oh, yeah. Very, very simple, pretty, very easy very to do. Easy. Uh, and obviously, if I was going to put the top on them, I wouldn't build it up quite so uh -huh. high. And then you could just put the top on. But, you know, like I said, you can just let them stand on the uh, table or the counter and people can pick mm -hmm. them up and go and then you just push them up to eat them. That's great. No mess, no spoons, forks nope. to have nope. to do. Just push it up. And they're also dishwasher safe. Yes, they I are like dishwasher that. safe. Well, you thank can you them. so much. I'm so glad you showed us these. Patty, thanks so much for being here. I don't know about you, but if I gain weight or lose weight, there's always a pair or two or three of jeans that I would like to do something with because, you know, you've got to recycle things. You can't just toss them away or whatever. But you have really created some beautiful things. Did Was it out of uh, just an interest in how to do it? or what, Yeah, what you know, everybody's you? doing jeans or in, in recycling and things like that. And we had a challenge for our sewing group. And so I oh. thought, well, I'll try something with the jeans. And I like to make purses. Oh, uh huh. So I. And they're popular now, too. Right. Oh, so I just Cute. basically designed a little purse. And I, all you need is the base. And then you just start messing around, putting the jeans and uh, the trim on. And. Uh, and you don't have to worry about raw edges because you can always put a piece of trim. Trim over it. Over it. Like here. Right. Uh -huh. Right. And also here, you know, this is the, the waistband. Oh, yeah. And so I even kept the button. And you can always buy the, the button somewhere, but I also kept a buttonhole. And then I've got all these pockets, which make it really neat because you can you, put reuse. Put your keys in there maybe. Right, or then, your cell phone. Uh -huh. or, and then the back, I decided to use another pair, of, uh, the other side of the jeans. And I took the zipper tape off and used the zipper, and now I've got a double pocket on this one because I used oh, the back side. Oh, you've got the regular pocket, and then you've got the, where the zipper. That is so clever. <laughs> and, you know, I know, someone else said this. I certainly didn't come up with it, but and you may not have done this here, but, you know, if you've got a bleach spot or if you've got a... right. Oh, grease or something on it. You can just cover that up sure. and go right on. It looks brand new. <laughs> right. That That's a cute idea using the waistband like that. I like and that. And then these are the belt loops here to oh. hold the... So you just use what you can. Uh-huh. And uh, it actually extended this, this shorter... Um, the this, handle. The strap uh -huh. just a little bit. And then here's another one. And obviously this is the same technique. Um, this hasn't got a double pocket. But then but I got smart zipper after trim. I uh -huh. did this one and thought, well, why couldn't you put, uh, oh. cut it a little differently? Mm -hmm. And then um, this is the yeah. double pocket on this side. And here and here. Right. And again, the waistband, right. the belt And loops. the background is just crazy patch. Uh -huh. So basically, you're just going to lay it down. So That's a quilting term, isn't it? Right. Crazy patch. Mm -hmm. Right. Gosh, so you what a just good use your to, scraps. Yeah, just use up all those things that we never throw right. away. Right, and you do want, you know, the, the background needs to be kind of a, a weighted fabric. So if you don't have something that's like a upholstery or something thicker, you can always interface it. Oh, good, so, uh, good point. Yeah, uh -huh. so I basically Here just take, take the jeans off. If you take that zipper out, 
nobody's going to know because you're going to just stitch it down anyway because you're oh. not going to oh, use a zipper the this way. I see. Uh -huh. Right. So if you take that zipper off, you've got the trim, and this was a cute little way to use. This uh, was on it originally. Yeah, different. Uh -huh different things. Now you didn't cut off this pocket even though it's longer. No, because what I want to do is come in and stitch it shorter oh. and then I'll cut it off. And then cut it. I see. Right. Because yeah. then I can't use it if I cut it off and sure. have a hole there. So Good and I don't point. want the stitching to go across there. Mm -hmm. So once I do that and then the back this is this is the way you would do uh, um, these are the back pockets. The back pockets mm -hmm. if you wanted to have that double uh, double pocket uh, you cut it out about a half inch wider, mm -hmm. and doesn't matter if it's straight or whatever. No, uh -uh. And then I love to put the on the back side. I love to put that that score tape. I yeah, think. that tape that uh -huh. you pull off, uh -huh. and then all you do is just hold it in. It's just a temporary, but it helps sure. because you and hard it's to washable. Pin all that. You said uh -huh. right, and it's hard to pin through all that. It is right, and then um, I come back and. So that's all going to be down, and then when mm -hmm. I go to top stitch this, I'll just top stitch it in the same color thread that it was made in. Uh -huh. So sometimes it's that kind of yellowish, yellowish, and gold. sometimes, you know, sometimes it's blue. Mm -hmm. And then this, I just took this zipper and applied it to the out, the inside part here, uh -huh. and I just flip it back, and then that I'm was applied right here. Right. Then uh -huh. I'm going to just stitch along the edge, and then when I apply this one, I can actually use this as a zipper. In the uh -huh. uh, behind pocket, mm -hmm. in that second so pocket. So that gives you right, and you can also take one. these little these little um, stoppers off and move them up. If you get a pair oh. of pliers and just pull them off, and then cut these down, and I cut Re that one. Reapply it. Right, I cut this one so that it would would fit, and then uh -huh. I won't have this. I'll have oh, it look yeah. like it's supposed to be. <laughs> okay, got that. <laughs> so that's always important to make it look like it was supposed to be, and Oops, then. There we go. And then this is when you, what you want to do is get your fabric. This is the design lay phase. Lay it down, yes. Uh -huh. So you have a base. Then you just can apply all kinds of fabrics. If you don't know what to do, sometimes you can get a set uh -huh. at the quilt store or whatever, and they're all coordinating. So you can like put them that. in different mm -hmm. places. You can also use your jeans with the, you know how you have the seam. Mm -hmm. Well, putting the seam in different ways kind of is another added interest. And that gives you a place to embellish right. when you finish. Okay. Right. So then uh, you can also, if you really wanted to uh, make it easy, Ooh, get a piece of fabric that's different colors all over. Mm -hmm. And then when you start laying your jeans on, and this is what I would do right here, I would I would kind of decide which way to put this this and there's no right or wrong way, is no. there? No, huh. but I do want to utilize that pocket, so uh -huh. I might angle it. That's why most of mine are angled, but it actually is a real good, interesting uh, way to look mm -hmm. at it. And then once I got, oh, different pieces, like I might even use this somewhere, you know, tuck now, it under. Oh, that's what I wondered. Would you finish those seams, or do you just lay it on top? Then I would take and oh, put some put trim, trim down. And this is different, this is a little more 3D trim. Uh -huh. So it might be something that would be, uh, oh, you know, embroidered that. pieces. Uh -huh. But you see, it, because it's so thick, it'll cover those thick sure. jean seams that seams. are uh, mm -hmm. raw edges. And that's basically all you have to do. Let's take to a look again, now that we see how to do it. Right, and see, so I you got also embellished these with some of those fuse-on crystals. Uh -huh. These were actually beads. So uh -huh. they're fused on. Okay. And this was just a little piece of applique. Right. That was you already done. Or even if you have an embroidery machine and you have all mm -hmm. kinds of embroidery pieces that uh -huh. you've done a test on and you don't know what to do with them, this That's is a good. great way to stick them in there and always throw them away. That's a, I hadn't thought about that. Right. Because a lot of them turn out really uh -huh. well. In the inside, you have pockets in there. You can actually make it the way you want it right. instead of the way the stores make it. Right. Well, these are great. Well, thank you so much. This, ought, this looks like a lot of fun to do. Well, thank you for having me.
Pat, thank you so much for coming. And I know you're a big proponent of eating fish and the amino acids and, and all of the good things that come in fish. Oh. But, you know, to me, it's kind of confusing. Maybe it's because I've not made fish a lot, not yep. prepared it, and not been around a lot of it. Well, you know, there's a lot of confusion about fish, that it's difficult to cook and that it, it, it's bland and it's boring, which is so untrue because there are so many wonderful varieties. But mostly it's this safety issue about um, fish and all types of seafood. And, you know, both the Food and Drug Administration and the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency both recommend that we have 8 to 12 ounces of fish each week, oh. especially for pregnant women. And that used to be a no-no, no, -no. no well, fish this at all because is where of the mercury, of right? the mercury. But, you know, there are so many great varieties, um, salmon, cod, catfish, scallops, that are very low in mercury. You know, there's really only four types of fish that actually we don't really even have a lot of in America. Uh, tilefish from the Gulf of Mexico, shark, swordfish, um, and we don't really see those fish. No. And it's less than 1% of what pregnant women might eat. Mm -hmm. The benefits of the omega-3 fatty acids in seafood for brain health in fetal development, for breastfed infants, and for kids and adults is so great because it's not just heart health, it's brain, brain health. health and eye health. Those oh. are the three big ones mm -hmm. for the three big reasons to eat seafood, in my opinion, it's those omega-3 fatty mm -hmm. acids. Well, and I was interested in reading more information about it, and you said if anyone just knows how to turn on the oven and put a piece of fish on a uh, cooking dish, or if they can run a can opener, That's they all can you have. If you it. can poach, <laughs> steam, grill, roast, or open a can, <laughs> you can do it because, you know, you can get fish that is fresh, mm -hmm. canned, frozen, and there's so many ways to prepare it. So I, I want to show a few okay. because I think that this is going to surprise a lot of viewers. What I like to do if people have a hesitation about um, fish is to swap it out for chicken. Oh, and don't tell anyone. And don't <laughs> tell a soul. Keep it to yourself. So I've taken tuna and a few other things, but let me show you what I've done. Is if you make burritos, tacos, quesadilla, kids will love these because they're really good finger foods. Uh -huh. And instead of chicken, add some tuna. And mm -hmm. you've got a good high quality protein. It's low in saturated fat, low in calories, so many benefits. Well, but, now, I've seen on billboards around town at yep. local restaurants, and it'll say fish tacos. And I have to admit, that doesn't sound too appealing to me. But I guess if I didn't know that's what was in it and yeah. thought it was chicken, I, I like chicken tacos. And truly, you would not know the difference. Huh. Also, an, another good one to try is the chicken and rice that almost every household oh, makes at made some that. point uh -huh. in time is, again, Put in something like the little baby or the base scallops oh. or tuna um, or shrimp. It's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. I've taken a nice pot pie mm -hmm. and, you know, we recommend it. It's got lots of um, different kinds of vegetables. You can put in a little bit of whole grain or brown rice. Oh. And mm -hmm. again, here's where I like to use a meaty fish like tuna. Oh, uh -huh. but you could certainly put in other types of fish in soups and oh, yeah. stews. Something like catfish or cod or maybe a larger scallop would be a nice way to go. Mm -hmm. And for people who like to make soups in a slow cooker, mm -hmm. you always want to put your seafood in at the end. 
right. That's because seafood cooks so quickly. That's it's another delicate. one of its pluses. Absolutely. And, you know, in, in my house, I always keep a few cans of tuna mm -hmm. in the cupboard, but also the freezer is my best friend oh. because the microwave has a defrost cycle on it. Oh, that's and right. And viewers, <laughs> you have to become familiar with your defrost cycle out there because literally in three minutes, you can defrost a piece uh -huh. of fish, you can put it on the grill and make a wonderful grilled seafood. This Salad. happens mm -hmm. to be grilled salmon. Mm -hmm. You could do any fish that you like on the grill. If you put it into a soup or a stew, it's virtually going to defrost itself. Uh -huh. So Now, I do think we want to point out that you can quickly overcook fish. So how do we know when fish is done? Usually, it will just turn color, it will, um, and it will be firmer. So if you're going to do like a salmon steak, same thing when you test meat with your finger is when... Oh. It's or flake firmer, it maybe with a fork. Or flake or... it with a fork. Or if you're cooking um, shrimp, for instance, it will turn white, white with a little bit of pink in it. And, you know, seafood is so easy because it's versatile. Mm -hmm. It's great for people of all ages. The nutrition benefits, you just can't beat them. Omega-3 fatty acids, I really want to point out, are found almost exclusively in seafood. We can mm -hmm. get some in flax and we can get it in soybeans and different soy foods. But when you want a complete protein, and that means it has all of the essential amino acids, um, you really want to look to seafood for that, mm -hmm. a great high quality right. protein. And because it is such a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. So if there was one thing you could summarize and say, what is it that we should know about fish and why it's important, what would you say? I would say it's that high quality protein mm -hmm. and the fact that it's such a rich source of omega-3s. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that there's one thing because I really have to remind everybody that seafood is safe, that mm -hmm. pregnant women should be eating it twice a week, the dietary guidelines tell us to eat it twice a week. Um, there, most of the seafood that we have in America um, is very low very in mercury mm -hmm. and very safe. And the benefits for the developing brains in the fetus, for breastfed infants, that's another way for them to get their omega-3 fatty acids. That's um, really, and what would you say are the three go-to seafood choices that are easy, uh, inexpensive, and the best choices for families to look for? Oh, I'd have to say keeping the canned tuna. Tuna, uh, <laughs> That's absolutely, that. you know, it just has to be on the shelf because at any given moment you can make a meal. Um, the second thing is, is join me in my love of the freezer. Uh -huh. All right, it's just uh -huh. great. And you know what? If you're ever at a loss for ideas, go to getrealaboutseafood.com. Getrealaboutseafood.com, yes. all together. Uh -huh. And there are so many wonderful recipes that are easy. There are tips about um, seafood as well as, uh, you know what? There's just, so those three <laughs> things, uh -huh. okay, canned tuna, you know, keep lots of frozen fish, learn how to defrost it in the microwave, and get real about seafood.com. Well, thank you, Pat. I've, I've learned a lot already. Thank you. Good. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to cook with legumes. We'll talk about the components of a living, sexy, fit lifestyle, and we'll demonstrate a quilt pattern called Rowdy Roosters. One of my next guests will demonstrate how to cook with healthy legumes and explain why they are so good to add to your diet. Two of the recipes he'll demonstrate are cannellini bean dip and Tex-Mex veggie chili. Another guest is going to talk about the components of a living, sexy, fit lifestyle, which takes a holistic approach. She includes correct eating, exercise, and motivation. And finally, another guest is going to show a new series of patterns which use a paper-backed fusible for easy applique, and she'll also show how she combines floral, fauna, and critters to create a kaleidoscope design for her quilt fabric. 
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at Cheryl.Borden at ENMU.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer you a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6900 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets that we have available online. We also would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to kenw.org and click on the Sign Up Now button. Thank you.